Sanu, welcome, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you all. Um, we started the morning with a session that was really more background on dimensions, and uh, we were, were taken through um, a lot of the details related to dimensions access and the features and uh, various uh, ways to search the database and various types of data that are stored in the database. Um, for those of you who may not have heard this um, uh, earlier, uh, this is a recorded session. All of the sessions today are recorded, so you will have access to them later. And if you're just joining now, you will have access certainly to the earlier session. Um, this session here will be focusing on creating collaborative projects and putting together collaborative teams. And I won't say much more than that. I will just hand it over to Heidi. So Heidi, all yours. Thank you. Okay. Uh, again, I'm going to do a basic overview for those of you that weren't in the first session. Uh, Dimensions is a database. We call it a linked research knowledge system internally, which I think is a little bit um, vague. Uh, it's a database on the steroids. Uh, and that's, I'm just going to move quickly through this. The reason that we created it again is because we wanted to move beyond looking just at publications and citations. Um, when we look at research, there's so much else that goes on. Uh, from the moment a grant is awarded, you get an insight into research that's to come. Research is then obviously conducted. It's presented at conferences. Data sets are generated. Uh, that's the latest content type in dimensions. Not to diminish publications, uh, but at the point of publication, even before citations accrue, there are there's activity on Twitter. Academics are talking about it. Practitioners are talking about it. Uh, there's news stories. We capture all of that via Altmetric. Uh, then, of course, there are traditional citations. But beyond that, was this research uh, cited in a clinical trial? Was it mentioned in a patent? Are policymakers talking about your research? So this is the broader picture of research that we sought to capture and we wanted to make it available in one place uh, without silos. These are some of the links, again, because uh, this is why I call it database on steroids. Not only do we have all this data, we've, we've linked it together. So where we can identify uh, a resulting publication from a grant that's listed on the grant record. Um, if that publication was cited in a clinical trial, that will be listed on the publication record. If it's cited in a patent application, that will be listed on the publication record. So again, there's, there's a lot of added value to having the links um, because you can trace the impact of research from you know, the, the grant stage to intellectual property to policy. Uh, and I'm sorry for the people that attended before. Uh, this is a brief overview. Again, not only do we have, in the context of coronavirus, we created this graph. Since the beginning of the year, you can see content coming into dimensions fairly quickly related to this, and not just journal articles. Uh, and preprints, really important. Data sets, really important. Again, in a time of crisis like this, making this data available as quickly as possible um, is a priority for us. We update our uh, publications daily. Um, I think there's someone unmuted. If you could mute, that'd be awesome. Uh, this is where we get our publication data from, primarily from Crossref, where DOIs are minted. Uh, also PubMed, Europe PMC. Um, again, I'd like to highlight the number of preprint servers, including BioArchive. Uh, we just added Archive. A psych Archive will come soon. It's in the pipeline. There are over 100 million records in dimensions. Uh, we are more inclusive than Scopus or Web of Science, for example. Uh, we want the user to determine what is valuable research. We don't want to be the arbiter of that. Um, and again, we include a number of preprint servers that other ANI databases do not include. Uh, you can full text search over 75 million of the publications that we have in Dimensions because we have direct relationships 
with over 130 publishers. So again, if you're looking to purchase an article or rent an article that you don't have a subscription to institutionally, again, this goes to the, the Elsevier uh, issue uh, with the UC system. So if you're, you want to buy an article, for example, from Elsevier, you can full text search and make sure that the terms that you're looking for, um, you know, very specific phrases, uh, Boolean search, abs uh, you can search the abstract search also um, will search full text. So this en uh, enables you to make a more informed decision about making those purchases on a one-off basis from Elsevier in particular. Um, this is just a graph to show you how much more quickly we uh, add content compared to other ANI databases. So Again, because we, we enter this daily, because we do a lot of um, artificial intelligence and natural language processing, we're able to put these publications in much more quickly. Um, we have more content in large part because we do include a number of preprint servers. Uh, data sets, as I mentioned, the last, uh, the most recent content type should be added to dimensions. On the right side of the slide, you'll see the sources for uh, those data sets. This will continue to expand. Again, this is all in the interest of, of giving you the most current insights into research. So often you'll see a data set, uh, you know, that hasn't made it into a publication yet, but you're still able to access that data. So there are over 1.5 million data sets and dimensions. There are exclusions that don't apply to you. Uh, you know, there are uh, data repositories that have, for example, you know, videos of, of dance performances. Those aren't going to be in dimensions. Uh, the grant data is one of the strengths of dimensions. We have over 500 funders globally, not just federal national funders, but private foundations as well, Gates, Robert Wood Johnson, we just added Kellogg. Um, and I'm sorry, again, I'm sorry if this is a repeat for some of you. I used to come from a strategic planning and grant evaluation uh, department at a funder. We bought Dimensions when it was just a grant database because it was the most comprehensive funding database we could find, which was very important to us for strategic planning. Uh, it has also helped us since, or helped them, I should say, since uh, identify researchers, look into their profiles, uh, evaluate grant applications, find reviewers for grant applications. So for example, if you're looking for reviewers for an internal award you might be making. Um, this is a great way to like, find them um, and look at, at, their, at their prior funding history as well. Patent data comes from a sister company to digital science called IFI Claims. If you've ever looked at Google patents, that's where they get their data from as well. We're in the process of building our backend infrastructure to pull in all of IFI uh, claims data, so that content will explode by the end of the year. We're particular excite, particularly excited about adding uh, Chinese and Japanese patents into Dimensions. Uh, the clinical trial data in Dimensions goes beyond clinicaltrials.gov and includes a number of registries around the world. The last one we added was Iran, and that will continue to expand. And then we have policy documents. So on the left side of the screen, you'll see just a sample of the types of organizations from who, from which we harvest these policy documents. And then we extract references. So we're able to say what research they cited in their policy documents. Okay, I'm going to stop right now. Okay, there are people that weren't in the earlier session, so I'm just going to go over the basic navigation and again, I apologize for the repeat for some of you. Um, so basic navigation, this is the platform. On the left side, you'll see filters. These will change according to content type, but this is where you're going to put time parameters. This is where you look for people, places, research organizations. Um, in the case of publications, you can look up individual journals. You can look at uh, things on a publisher level. Um, again, this is analytics. Uh, 
you can we have various journalists so if you just want to limit your search to publications in PubMed you can do that for example and then obviously everything is open access tagged that changes you'll see um, when we go to grants and patents there are fields that just don't apply there's an active and start year for grants that doesn't apply to publications obviously uh, patents will have legal status that doesn't apply um, to to, to the other content types of so those change but that's where basically when you're looking for an advanced search type feature this is where you would go first the middle panel of dimensions is your result set so whatever filters you apply whatever search terms you use and um, we'll go into the types of searches in a second this is where your results uh, appear you can sort them a number of ways depending on content type and you can export them um, the export limit for plus which is what most of you will have is 5,000 records at a time uh, you can do that multiple times a day it's not a per user per day limit so you could conceivably do that a hundred times a day but it would be 5,000 at a time so you'd have to uh, limit your result set to that normally I suggest using uh, time parameters so just export you know one year at a time for example and then uh, by far my favorite part of dimensions is the analytical view pane so this functions similarly to a pivot table for your result set so instead of uh, having to export an, an excel file and pull out people and organizations we aggregate that information for you and provide it in these analytical views so you can get insights into your result sets with a couple of clicks and last but not least, the search bar. This is where you'd enter your search. There are four different ways to search. Excuse me, I'm a little bit sick today. Um, uh, there are four different ways to search interventions, and we'll get into that in a second, but this is where all of the filters you apply will appear, uh, any time parameters, search terms. You can layer them all on top of each other. Uh, so there are four ways to search in dimensions uh, as I mentioned before because we have agreements with um, over 130 publishers and also with IFI claims you can search the full text of over uh, it's now 75 million publications even the ones you don't have access to um, this is going to give you a larger set of results um, but might um, uncover something if you're looking for a really expansive for example literature review uh, with terms that might not be included in the abstract or title you can use the full data search title and abstract search is exactly what it sounds like uh, it's just limiting to the title and abstract it's going to give you a smaller set of results but likely really relevant uh, the abstract search I love that there's birds chirping even though someone's unmuted <laughs> it's, it's really lovely anyway uh, abstract search is is by far the most popular feature in dimensions this enables you I call it a blob of text search because it could be anything it could be a project description it could be a uh, an, it could be an art draft article abstract it could be a conference session description uh, if you're looking for a speaker for example uh, it can be anything it needs to be long and specific enough to the point where we can extract terms from it in order to conduct this search uh, if you if you type in something you know that's a sentence long it's really not going to be that effective and we'll show this to you live on the platform and then if you know exactly what you're looking for and you have a DOI in publications only you can select the DOI toggle button and you can look for one or more uh, publications using DOIs okay um, this is even shorter slide so thank you for those of you who went through that again uh, now I want to get right into the platform and talk about um, building teams so what I did was I used the abstract search um, and I pulled where is this now okay oh I'm in plus <laughs> sorry so 
So I used the abstract from this grant um, and I saved it as a favorite. So uh, just using this as an example. So this is the abstract of the award, which I've put into the abstract search. So now I'm looking at, again, highly similar content. If I want to look for people um, that might contribute to this project, there's, you can look at this from a number of ways. And now Comcast is going to throttle my internet. Um, if we look at publications, again, you can quickly look at analytical views. You can identify researchers. If you want to limit them by location and analytics, you can do that. So if I'm only interested in collaborators from California, I can do that or you know, a specific country. If you're looking at a funder, for example, where you need to have a, a PI located in that, in that country, and it's not the US, this is a way to find collaborators uh, internationally as well. So I could, I could, you know, limit to Canada if I'm aiming to get funding from Canada to find a collaborator there. But the analytical views, again, uh, this gives you easy insight into identifying people, you can look again at different metrics associated with their publication output. So uh, RCR is a relative citation ratio. Uh, it only applies to articles in PubMed that are over two years old. C FCR is a field citation ratio. It's more broad. Uh, so it includes everything, not just PubMed publications. Um, that's also only calculated after two years because, again, we want citations, uh, give citations a chance to accrue. You can also look for researchers that have had a lot of attention online, uh, coverage of discussion of their research. So you can see here, this is the median score. If I wanted to look at the percentage of their publications that had some attention online, any, this could be anything from a tweet to a news story. Um, so again, it's best to dig into the, to come. but look, oh, we have a profile that popped up right away. Um, the, the recipient of this grant, unsurprisingly. <laughs> um, so uh, again, if I wanted to learn more about this person, I would go to their profile and I'm gonna back out of that research. Hopefully that works, nope. I think it's important that you see me fail <laughs> so that you know how to get out of it yourself. So I'm gonna back out of the search. Now I can see everything associated with this researcher. So again, data sets, funding, um, all of the funding. So if we look, there's not only the grant that we were just looking at, but every grant we have in dimensions related to this researcher will be in here and you can click into these grant records. Um, we'll actually look at, where was it? I go back to my favorites uh, again, but when you're looking for collaborators, uh, you can investigate them in significant detail um, and get everything we know about them out of dimensions. Heidi, we have a question about RCR and FCR, um, just to clarify. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the question specifically is RCR is publications level, correct? Is FCR an overall ratio in the field? Okay, so the thing I can do that will help the most here is if you hover on about the metrics, it will give you detailed information about the different scores. So um, again, field citation ratios relative to publications that are of a similar age and in their subject area. Um, I saw a hilarious tweet the other day. Uh, someone was very depressed about the amount of citations uh, to their research. And someone replied, uh, you should look at the FCR in dimensions. You'll feel a lot better <laughs> about yourself, uh, which was great. Uh, again, it's an attempt to feel normalized. This is much broader uh, than the RCR. The RCR, again, is a similar metric, right? 
but it only applies to publications that are in PubMed. Does that answer your question? Okay, great. Uh, the other thing to know is that we do categorize articles, uh, uh, categorize things on an article level. So uh, any given article, and here we go, trial by fire, will have multiple, might have multiple categories. So we don't just look at the journal. Like if you think about it, you know, what, what research category would nature fall under or, or you know, uh, science? They're, they cover multiple disciplines. Um, so we can categorize things on an article level, and that means that that field citation ratio is even more important because we're able to do that. So we're able to say that this, this publication, even though the journal might be about you know, medical and health sciences, there's also a component to this research that involves maybe you know, so, so social sciences. We can categorize them as both. So you'll get the FCR that reflects, you know, similar articles in similar subject areas. So it's, it's a much more contextualized metric than just looking at straight citations. Um, I'm going to go back to that uh, abstract search and talk about other ways to find people. Uh, it's, it's an, this happens every time I have a demo. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I live in Philadelphia and Comcast likes to throttle me uh, frequently. So again, uh, we looked at publications for possible collaborators. We could also look at data sets. And again, we can identify the researchers associated with data sets. We could put a time limit. We could layer a time limit on this um, if we wanted to. Uh, and then we can look, we can, you can actually click through to those data sets associated with each researcher. So publications is one way to identify people. Uh, researchers is another. Uh, then, very important, Funding. Uh, if you want to find researchers that have been awarded funding for similar research, uh, those tend to be very successful collaborations. Again, obviously the, the AI here is at the top, uh, but you can see other um, uh, researchers that have secured funding for, again, similar research. This looks like this might be a very similar grant. Um, in fact, most of those are. Uh, so again, but you can make this search as specific or broad as you want. So it doesn't have to be an abstract search. You could do a Boolean search. Uh, I recommend only using the research categorization systems when you're looking, again, very broadly at a field. Uh, if you have a specific project in mind, I would definitely recommend either the abstract search or Boolean search. So that is funding. And again, I can even look to see who's actively working on uh, something. So this year I can limit to, and I can see the researchers that have grants active this year, very similar to this project. So again, this is a great way to build uh, not only teams, but, but bring in funding. Um, as, as a team moving forward, because you know that these people have a history of success in being awarded funding. You can also look at research organizations. So these are some, you might want to just dig into their profiles and see what their researchers are doing, but you can see again where the funding is going, where similar funding is going. Um, obviously, because we use that abstract search, <laughs> this is going to come to the top. But again, these are organizations with which you could uh, collaborate with uh, that are doing similar work. So that's funding. I'm going to take out that active year filter because again that's specific to grants. And then you can also look at clinical trials. So if there are people conducting cl uh, clinical trials that are very similar, again, to this project. 
we can look at those researchers. You might want to time limit this, um, again, to either a starter active year or even clinical trial status, phase, uh, gender, condition. And this is where I think um, this is going to be very helpful. And this is also available in PLUS as well. And we can certify condition. Again, now we can identify people that are doing, this is a very specific abstract, but that have active clinical trials. And then you can dig into those clinical trials. Loading. So this is the total information we have on this person. Obviously, it's working in the federal funder. This is the, uh, the specific clinical trial. So you can dig into those records. Again, get a lot of detail. You'll see how many feel, you know, this is, we've categorized this in so many different ways uh, because it covers so many different topics. Uh, again, you'll get the abstract, you'll get references from the clinical trial. So either and these references that are that were made, sorry, by the clinical trial. We also have citing references. So if someone cites a clinical trial, that would be listed as well um, and linked to here. Okay, that's not what I want. And again, the abstract search is just so useful because you can you can really drill down to to such a specific set of results. Uh, and again, you don't have to do this multiple times; it's one search. Um, you could also look at uh, intellectual property again. So, if I wanted to find companies that might want to sponsor or collaborate with this project. Um, this is something I wanted to show you. So here I want to look at, and let's say I want to find a local person. And again, this is analytics. So we have the location. I can limit this to uh, California. I could even drill down to the city, but let's, let's not push our luck. So we've got Approximately 10 patents, one record. So if I go now to analytical views and look at assignees, I'm really interested. I'm always fascinated by what the patents are. So you can get uh, and most people I know don't use this information unless you're in, in, in the IP uh, world. But again, you can see what they're investing in. I'm sorry, this is going to take me to close another. So again, the abstract search is only one way to do this. Um, because we have such rich researcher profiles, again, with multiple content types, it really allows you to investigate what people have done um, and how it's you know, performed. Uh, we, at Digital Science, you know, we're very sensitive about the topic of metrics uh, we want to provide context, but we don't want to be, you know, the end all and be all of, of how you perceive the impact of, of research. For example, um, at, well, actually, let me show you a publication record. Oh. 
So you can see in the publication record, um, not only the metadata for this article. So let's say this is someone that you're, you're um, considering as a, as a teammate or collaborator. You can look at the references. You can look at the supporting grants that we were able to connect to this. This is a huge study. Um, you can click into all of these grant records uh, and find out more about them specifically. You can examine the citations uh, to a publication as a set. So if I clicked on show all my, my results, that would update to these 5,000 publications and I could examine them. This also shows me this was cited in three clinical trials. There are, every time I open this, there's more policy document citations. Um, policy document citations. So it's really a one-stop shop to find out what the impact of this article was. Um, if you drill into the badges, it's gonna give you more detail around context um, for citations. So the, the, the dimensions badge will give you total citations citations in the past two years. Again, this is, has an astronomical field citation ratio because it was such a big study, um, as well as the RCR. You can see citations over time. And you can see, again, because we categorize uh, publications at an article level, we're able to capture much more of the interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary impact. So unsurprisingly, medical and health sciences, this is a medical study is at the top, but if you scroll down, you can see there are some percentage of publications uh, it's, uh, in education and earth sciences that are citing this research. So it's a really nice way to get, a, again, a broader picture of the impact of your research. If you click on the Altmetric badge, you'll be able to examine, again, the context of the attention. If this was a terrible study, <laughs> poorly conducted, you'd want to know that. You'd find out pretty quickly um, by reading the actual source document. So we try to make everything as auditable as possible. You can click through and read these news stories, unless they're behind a paywall, um, and get the con find out how people are talking about your research. Um, this also includes blog. This is most, it's not all the sources. We track 17 different sources. Google Plus, sadly, we'll be saying goodbye to <laughs> soon. But again, even on Twitter, uh, an increasing number of academics are on Twitter. I always encourage people to get on Twitter. Um, I've learned a ton that way. Uh, but, it's, but if people were just roundly uh, trashing this research, you'd be able to see that very quickly. Uh, there's also a category called uh, peer reviews, so like um, Faculty 1000. If they were, had mentioned this, that would a tab would appear here and you'd be able to see it as well. And obviously because these platform, these systems interact with sister companies with Altmetric, we pull in dimension citations as well. So again, you can do a very in-depth analysis of the research that potential collaborators um, have done, um, you know, how successful they were with outreach. Uh, I always caution people about the altmetric score. Oops, there's a question. Uh, so the question was, if a publication does not show up in an author search, is it possible to add it? No, uh, not currently. We don't, because we process things so quickly um, and it's uh, a lot of AI and natural language processing, uh, it's, it's, and the volume of uh, the number of researchers, uh, we're a relatively small company. <laughs> uh, we're, we, don't, we don't have the capacity at this point to allow people to edit um, individual profiles. I will say though, even though we update to publications on a daily basis, the affiliation part of that, so connecting it to a researcher in an institution, takes uh, more time. So that's done, to, I want to say two to four times a year. So it, the publication may be in dimensions and it may not be associated with your profile for a couple of months if that makes sense. Oh, I love questions. Okay. 
if you update your ORCID profile or NH profile, it may be indexed in the meshes. So here's the, yeah, Michael. So, so I did want to uh, clarify something about ORCID. Even though you can add uh, publications to your ORCID profile, that won't automatically add them to your dimensions profile. And the reason is I can go in right now and add like 20 neuroscience publications to my profile. Um, there's nothing stopping me from doing that. So, uh, especially, especially for someone with my name. So we don't pull information from ORCID other than, uh, you know, you'll see links to ORCID profiles and then in the experience and education part of that profile, if you have something in there, we'll pull it in, but we don't pull, we don't rely on that as a source for publication data. Um, it does help us disambiguate them. I think the voice edit the sources that do get pulled. Yeah, uh, you know, again, because we're getting our publication data from Crossref uh, in particular, um, it's really hard to, to slice and dice that. We do, we do have journals approach us to be indexed and we just advise them to, you know, sign up for the Crossref and then they'll automatically be pulled into dimensions. So um, we do look out for predatory journals, however, so we don't want to um, index absolutely everything. Uh, but um, again, it's a more expansive list than you'll find in Scopus or the science. Okay, awesome. All right, um, we're at 154. Um, I'm sure like many of you, I'm losing track of time and days <laughs> lately. Uh, so I wanted to just leave the rest of this portion for questions. Um, again, the research or profile, the way you can, the, the different sources of data, the way you can identify who's already doing the work, um, who has a track record of doing the work. You can time limit to see who's doing, you know, if I'm looking for a project and I want someone that has uh, either, you know, published very recently or secured funding into future years. I mean, that, that is a huge th uh, thing to know when you're looking for a collaborator. Um, uh, and again, it's very easy to do that in dimensions and you didn't have to do such a specific search could be more broad and your imagination is the only limit you know when you're searching um, you can you can do whatever you want we had some one the other day that wanted to look for modernism and literature uh, so we did that and um, the, you know perfect result sets found out what funders this person could go to um, and it was a proposal editor uh, at a different institution, but you know, she thought this was just enormously useful, especially for you know identifying funders. But in your case, creating teams. So if you're looking for someone who's working, for example, I'm going to use an example that probably well might apply, um, which we did at Carnegie Mellon, which was robotics. But we didn't want to look at just all robotics. We wanted to look at robotics that were related to medicine. So this little, little devices that they're developing. Uh, so we applied a very broad medical, again, this would be available in plus medical and health sciences. And then we looked at, um, we were looking at patents specifically, but again, this is a way to, to make your search, um, to limit your search. So if you're something like sleep, right? That's a very broad topic. Well, maybe not. robotics is definitely, but if you're looking for something like, I'm trying to think of, of uh, uh, like, like material synthesis, but only as applied to a certain field, using those fields of research will help you narrow it down and again, that if you're looking for someone, especially in a field you're unfamiliar with, um, this is a great way to identify potential collaborators and then you can drill into their profiles um, and, and, and learn quite a lot about them um, in dimensions. Okay, I'm gonna leave it now to questions.
Okay, now I'm going to ask a question. Um, does this seem useful to you? <laughs> I'm so glad. Okay, yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, as I said, a little off my game today, so just checking in. Um, there's a way to have emailed. Up. Yes, okay, it's alerting. So this is only available in analytics. Um, but uh, if I were to do, uh, actually, let me, let me let me do my. So if I were to save this as a favorite, that's how you can um, sign up for email alerts. And they come out on Sundays weekly. Uh, and so it will alert you to any new content that comes in that's related to your search, that matches your search. So this will eventually expand to include clinical trials, uh, patents as well, um, and data sets. Yeah, the email feature is fantastic. And I tell you what also, I just wanted to like briefly mention, it's fantastic for communications as well, because, um, you know, depending on your structure at different institutions, communication can be really slow. So if I'm in marketing uh, or PR for, for an institution, I want to know like immediately when we get an award or a new publication comes out that's getting attention, um, getting an alert and not even having to go into the platform um, to find that information and without having to rely on anyone else <laughs> uh, to get it really gives you a jump on those kinds of activities. Yeah, and uh, oh, by the way, the, the alerting feature is going to be expanded to plus. Uh, that is coming. That's on our roadmap. So uh, don't don't uh, that that's going to come to to uh, to everyone. Uh, sorry, there's more questions. Yes, I know. Uh, we push for that. We push for that. We also, I mean, I, oh, the other thing I wanted to show you, uh, actually, I know this is not part of this session, but uh, we have a support center and. There is a uh, suggest a feature button. Um, I have made a lot of enemies on our product team by suggesting features, uh, but we do so much product development based on user feedback. Uh, if you suggest a feature, if there's something you wish you could do in Dimensions and you, and you can't do, uh, for example, uh, right now, uh, if I look at a grant record, it will show me the resulting publications, but I can't get that out of the platform. I can just look at them. So, um, yeah, there is a there's there's lots of resources um, uh, in the support portal. There's forums. Um, suggest a feature I wanted to specifically mention because it really does make a difference and you'll be able to tell, um, you, you can vote things up or down. We'll tell you when, if it's planned or in progress or deferred. Um, you'll see here, me being, <laughs> uh, I didn't realize for a long time that this is publicly viewable uh, and the product team was like, can you not? <laughs> but I have two votes, so I feel completely vindicated. Uh, so now that's planned. So you'll be able to export the resulting publications from a grant record. Um, so you can look at them as a set. So I, I did want to talk about that. So let's go to everything we have. Uh, there's a, a report about dimensions uh, that goes into detail about how we handle data the principles behind it, you know, the origin story, everything. Uh, you can read about that there. We have uh, how to's. Uh, I would suggest looking there first if you have questions. If you can't find an answer for your question, please submit a support ticket. 
Um, we generally respond within 24 hours, except for weekends. And I can tell you, uh, I've never worked with a more thorough support team. They will really help you um, if you're having problems with a query um, or can't figure out how to do something or having trouble accessing uh, dimensions. So they're, they're, they're very responsive. Um, so do feel free to, to utilize that. We also have forums including suggest feature. Um, you can access the release notes. And then we have a number of discussions going on. So there's, there's different ways to interact with the Dimensions uh, community. And the other thing I should know at this point is that we have uh, throughout the year, every other month, we are conducting customer only webinars uh, on different, uh, for different user groups. So uh, we just did one, for example, on uh, for early career res researchers. You'll be getting emails about that uh, every other month. We don't want to overwhelm you. And then there is a product update call um, that occurs quarterly that will give you some insights into what we've recently released. If you don't want to read the release notes, which I can imagine most, <laughs> most of you won't. Um, what we've recently improved, and then it will have some kind of um, interesting presentation and use case of dimensions and an uh, insight into our product roadmap um, for the upcoming six weeks and six months. How often, okay, I have a question. Uh, how often do you update the researcher's profile regarding received grants. So uh, essentially, if you can picture it like this, so there, there's a publications core, and there's a researcher core, there's a grant data core, so those all get updated uh, at different times. So you know, metrics are updated daily, publications are updated daily, uh, the grants are updated monthly, so uh, I would expect a grant to, uh, generally, as a general rule, there are some uh, funders that don't release their awarded grant data uh, monthly, they do it on a quarterly basis. So obviously, you know, we can't um, update until we get the data. But as a general rule, it's monthly. Um, so that's, that's, that's about the lag. So if you were awarded a grant like today, you would probably see it, um, you know, latest in May. Uh, and I'm happy to, um, we did have a question about, you know, the, the, the version thing. Um, uh, happy to do, we do have resources on our website and I will show you those now. Oh, we have to spell it right here. So there are a number of resources um, in our, uh, on our website, including API documentation, um, videos. So we have a couple of how-to videos. Um, there is a quick start guide for uh, Dimensions Analytics, and there is a quick start guide for Dimensions Plus included here. Uh, hey, there we go. Um, there's a, a number of resources here, including you know, our upcoming webinars. There's a library toolkit. I saw your fantastic landing page for Dimensions, uh, so glad to see you've utilized it. Someone had a question. Is there anything that you want to, you know, I know we have, a, we have kind of a panel open-ended Q&A coming up. Uh, but if there's anything that you're curious about and want to know uh, or run through, I mean, really quickly, I'm happy to do that. Uh, since there's silence, what time, are, what time are we ending? Liz, can you help me out here? Sorry. We have 10 more minutes, Heidi. Oh, okay, great. Good, good, good. Okay. 
All right. Well, I mean, we, uh, I'm not going to leave you hanging. Uh, I'll give you some time in your life back <laughs> since we have another session coming up. So if there are no more questions, um, looking forward to later. I hope that you do, if you do attend, um, that you've, you thought about what you might want to do with dimensions that can help you figure out the best way to do that. And that session starts at 11.30. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to... Oh, this is one more to go. Yay. <laughs> okay. Excellent. All right. I'm going to end the recording. Thank you for coming.